Hey guys, Dr. Ryan Hetland here, RH Health and Injury. I'm here with Coach Michaela. She's a certified yoga instructor and she's gonna be helping walk me through my top 10 and our top 10 as we went through the best yoga stretches to do. Now these are the top 10 that I feel and Michaela feel are the best for people that might be starting out with stretching. They're doctor approved for recovering from injuries and starting to, to do stretches. And these yoga positions we feel are the best for that. Keep in mind as you go through these stretches that you want to be in the non-pain zone. If these are causing a lot of pain, we would ask that you would stop. You don't want to power through any of these moves. As you progress through each one of these stretches, Day by day and week by week, you should feel more and more comfortable and more and more flexible. Some things to keep in mind as you're going through these is body awareness. Pay attention to what your body is doing, how your body's feeling, what muscles feel tight, what muscle feels really good to stretch, and really hone in on those because that's something that we can't teach you, you have to feel, you have to be aware of that. Proper biomechanics in yoga is so important and it's something that Michaela does very well at pointing out for you. Our whole goal is to create longer, stronger muscles. A long muscle is a strong muscle. Okay, before you start these 10 best yoga stretches, we always recommend you warm up a little bit. It helps them lengthen more comfortably. And so some things you can do to warm up, you could walk for as long as comfortable walking, 15 to 30 minutes would be a great kind of warm up and great exercise to warm up your muscles. You can always stretch after a hot bath or a hot shower is a great time to stretch because your, your body's warm from the shower. And any sort of exercise you might already be doing is a great time to stretch. So let's start with child's pose. So bring your big toes to touch. Walk your knees to the outskirts of the mat. So walk them wide, and then bring your arms out all the way out in front of you and let your head rest heavy on the floor. Good, so drop your head to the floor. Drop your hips towards your heels as best you can. And if that's uncomfortable for you, bring your knees in together as well. But the biggest component here is reaching your hands out as far out in front of you as you can while also bringing your hips back. This will help really decompress the spine and really stretch your body out front to back. So some things that you should be feeling here is a deep stretch within the side bodies. So along the armpit and along the side of your ribs, as well into the hips too. If you have some tight glutes around there, that can be a good stretch for you as well in this pose. So stay in this position for about 20 to 30 seconds, really taking in deep um, diaphragmic breaths. So stretching out those ribs, filling the lungs up, and then letting it go, exhaling it out. Maybe do about five deep breaths here. Come on up, back into tabletop pose. Take a little break and then reconvene and go back into that pose and do it about four times. Next up is cat and cow. So come to a tabletop position, stacking your palms under your shoulders and then your knees under your hips. First, we're gonna do cow. So drop the belly, lift your gaze, and spread your chest out wide, bringing your shoulder blades back and down. Good, now cat pose, push into the floor, round your spine, arching it towards the ceiling, gaze towards your inner thighs. So a big component here is utilizing your breath. So when you do cow, you're going to inhale, and when you do cat, you will exhale. So inhale, cow pose, let your belly hang heavy, let your tailbone come towards the ceiling, your chest lifted up and your gaze lifted towards the top. And then exhale, cat pose, push into the floor, round your spine, separating your shoulder blades and tuck your tailbone towards your head. Keep on doing that. Inhale, cow pose, let your belly fall to the floor, hip flexors drop, exhale, cat pose, round your spine. Good. Another big thing here is to get a deeper stretch along this part. Stay here and walk your wrists back a little bit towards your knees. 
and keep on pushing so that those shoulder blades separate and become closer to your shoulders. This is a really good stretch for people with their upper back. We often can be in a certain position um, for a long time at work and this can cause a lot of stress and tension within our shoulder blades. So it's a really good dynamic stretch that can really mobilize that upper spine. Pretty slow here. Start off with about 20 second holds into cow and cat. And then from there you can utilize your breath and speed it up and be a little bit more dynamic with your movements. To continue with this tabletop position, stay as you are. This is a side body stretch. So lifting your right arm across your upper body, reaching at a diagonal, you'll feel it really good on the long side of your body all the way down towards your hips. This is a really good stretch for not only your spine and your low back, but also just a good stretch along your arm and your ribs. So holding that pose for about 20 seconds, really reaching your hips at the opposite direction as well, um, and sitting back if that feels good too, and then switch to the other side about four times. Last one here in our tabletop pose is called bird dog. Now this is a core engagement as well as a stretch. So staying in your tabletop pose, reach your left arm out in front of you and your right foot back behind you. So it's a slight balance here, and I want you to think of dropping this right hip towards the floor so that your back is flat, and then hold here. Now bring your knee in towards your elbow so they can touch. Hold, and then reach back out. Good, and then drop it to the floor. Now switch sides, so reach your right arm out in front of you, your left arm back, and the biggest thing here is your flat back. So if your arch is happening here, drop this leg a little bit lower so that you can really elongate that spine. Now bring your knee and elbow towards one another. Hold and breathe here. Reach back out, elongate that spine, and drop that knee towards the mat. If this is a little bit too tricky for you, I would advise just starting with your legs and then doing your arms on their own. So reaching that leg, feeling that pull along the spine and holding for a few seconds and then coming back down. And then do the other leg, bring it in towards your chest, bring your knee in, reaching it back out and bringing it back down. This will not only help your balance, but it'll help your core stability and being able to utilize it within other stretches as well. Starting in tabletop pose, come back down, curl your toes under, lift your hips up towards the ceiling, pressing your chest towards your thighs. Now, a big piece is that people think that they need to have their heels down here to get the stretch, and matter of fact, you don't. I'd rather have you bend your knees slightly to be able to push your chest back towards your thighs and lift your shoulder blades out of your ears. Good, you wanna feel that stretch not only in your hamstrings, but your upper body too and keeping that balance equal in not only your hands, but also your feet. This is a deep stretch along the back of your legs, and so you don't need to hold it for a very long time to feel that good stretch. Something I often see in Downward Facing Dog is somewhat of a hunch in our upper back rather than a reach. So if you could go back into Downward Facing Dog, lift your hips, see how his shoulders are kind of just as they are maybe in a push-up position. But if you think of reaching and really pushing away the mat and separating that for yourself and pushing your chest towards your thighs, you will get much better of a stretch in your upper spine. Now this is a much more dynamic pose. So taking deep breaths throughout this, maybe rolling out your wrists and coming to the floor to stretch them out, um, really utilizing your breath during that pose. Do it for about 20 seconds and then come back down for about four times. All right, next up is crescent lunge. This is a super good hip flexor stretch along with strengthening your legs. So I will have you come into a regular lunge, stepping your right foot, keeping it at a 90, 90 degree bend, and then stepping your left foot back, straightening that left leg out behind you. Yep, now reaching your hands up above, straight into goal posts, curling your pinky rings, pinky fingers in, and stretching and pulling and straightening your arms up above you. 
Some people experience somewhat of a pull on the hip flexor. If you do feel that, you can bend that back leg slightly, but a huge thing is, is tucking that belly under and squeezing those glutes forward so you still feel that hip flexor stretch in there. If that stretch is a little bit too difficult to hold, you can always come down to your knee. This is called crescent moon. Reaching your arms again up above you, squeezing that right glute behind you as much as you can to tuck your core under and reaching your hips towards this way. Feel that hip flexor stretch. Good. Lastly, to somewhat intensify the hip flexor stretch, you can always reach the opposing arm up above you. So if you have your left leg up, you'll have your right arm up and reaching it up and over and feeling that stretch along that hip flexor. A tip here is to really watch your low back extension. A lot of people tend to go into this pose in this manner rather than straightening out the spine. So come back into a normal crescent lunge here. It's really common to arch the back when you're trying to straighten that back leg. So dropping that back knee actually really allows you to tuck that core under and really get in that pelvic tilt. I recommend doing this stretch about three to four times, holding it for about 10 to 20 seconds, working your way up towards 20 seconds. Next pose is called chair pose. So you'll come together with your feet on the floor and your knees and ankles all touching together. You'll bring your hands up above you and sit back as if you're sitting into a chair. Now, something I like to advise is looking down to see if you can see your toes. And if not, bring your weight more into your heels and your hips back towards behind you. So something I see here often is where our body is straight up and down rather than coming forward. So I'd rather have an angle of your upper body at this angle and then your hips coming back, kind of like a greater than signal. Perfect. And a huge thing here is engaging your legs, so feeling that energy between them, squeezing your knees and your thighs together, you'll really feel your outer glutes being engaged. And if it's too much on your shoulders with your arms up here, bring your hands together um, at your chest. So for proper alignment, I recommend having it at a 45 degree angle. So if you're standing, that's 180, but when your chest comes forward at a 45 degree angle, and then for your legs, it should also be about a 45 degree angle this way. So what you'll feel within this pose is your legs engaged, your glutes engaged, and your core tucked under. But the biggest thing here is really reaching those arms out in front of you to also feel that spine decompression as well. Hold this pose for about 20 seconds and then come back up and do that about four times. Next up is modified upward facing dog. So come to a seated position, slowly lower down onto your elbows and then all the way down to the floor on the mat. Prop your hands just below your ribs. Straighten your arms out and lift your chest up high. Now a huge thing is relax those shoulder blades down, bringing your chest wide and feel that stretch along the front of your body here. Another place that you will feel this is also in the lower part of your spine called lordosis, so that big arch in your lower back there. Hold this pose for about 20 to 30 seconds and then come back into a child's pose position to really stretch it out for another 20 to 30 seconds. Do this for about four times. The next pose is supine pelvic tilt. So it's extremely important to stretch out that lower spine that you just stretched by reversing the stretch. So come to your back on the floor and prop your heels on the mat. To understand maybe what the muscles that you are engaging in this pose, bring your hands right under your bottom ribs here. You're gonna feel a space between your back and the floor. Now squeeze those lower abdominals and engage them to flatten out your spine. This is gonna stretch those muscles that were just in a curve in the opposite direction. Hold this for about 20 seconds, relax, re-engage for three to four times. Something that can intensify the stretch is utilizing your breath. So before you engage, take a deep inhale, and when you engage, exhale it out and hold it there. Last pose here is supine half pigeon. So stay as you are, bring your left foot across your right knee, 
and squeeze and bring your hamstring, your right hamstring up towards your chest. In this stretch, you will feel it along the left piriformis alongside your glute. Hold this pose for about 20 to 30 seconds for about three to four times. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video of Mikhail and I teaching you the top 10 yoga stretches for your back. Yoga can be really intimidating, and but there's a lot of benefits to doing these stretches. I highly recommend all of my patients do these series of stretches. I encourage everyone to make it a part of your routine to have a morning or evening or an afternoon stretch and just take the time to focus on your breathing, take the time to stretch and take the time for your body to give it what it needs and make sure your muscles are long and strong. If you could take a moment and comment on the video, the yoga pose that maybe you struggle with the most or one that you would like us to go over uh, in a future video, that would be great.